Today, I gave every team in the NFL the best running back in their team's history. And since there's a whole lot of them, let's go team by team to check them out. So the Bears get Walter Payton, Bengals get Corey Dillon, Bills get Thurman Thomas, Broncos get Terrell Davis, Browns get Jim Brown, the Bucks get Warwick Dunn, Cardinals get David Johnson, Chargers got LaDainian Tomlinson, Chiefs get Jamal Charles, Colts get Edger and James, Commies get Clinton Portis, Cowboys get arguably the best running back of all time with Emmitt Smith. Now for the Dolphins, I gave them Ronnie Brown. I know Larry Zonka is the best running back they've ever had, but Ronnie Brown is just a personal favorite for how much he embarrassed the Patriots running the Wildcat. The Eagles get LaShawn Shady McCoy, Falcons get Michael Turner, Niners get Frank Gore, Giants get Tiki Barber, Jags get Fred Taylor, the Jets get Curtis Martin, the Lions get Barry Sanders, Packers get Amon Green. I put CMC back on the Panthers. It could have been D'Angelo Williams or Jonathan Stewart, but I think Panthers fans would love to have CMC back. Patriots get Kevin Falk, the Raiders get Marcus Allen, the Rams get probably the most broken player in Mutt history with Eric Dickerson going back to their team. The Ravens get Jamal Lewis. The Saints get Deuce McAllister. Seahawks get Beast Mode Marshawn Lynch. Steelers got the bust Jerome Bettis. Texans get Arian Foster. For the Titans, I had to give him Derrick Henry back. And lastly, for the Vikings, they get all day Adrian Peterson back on their team. Every single one of these players is a 99 overall superstar X Factor. And we're going to jump in to play with a bunch of them. But first, these types of videos take literally days to set up. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button too while you're at it. I'm working really hard on a video right now that includes Sketch, Ninja, RBT, Wyatt's World, Kenny, how about those Chiefs, and more. And I can promise you do not want to miss that video, so make sure you're subscribed. Now, as always, I never know who's going to make the playoffs when I add these players into the league, and I would feel like an absolute fool if I didn't get to get some runs with, like, Walter Payton. And plus, I know that I have uh, people who watch the videos from all different fan bases. Oh, come on, keep going, Walter. You're somehow still up. So I want to make sure that everyone gets to see the best running back they've ever had actually get to play in this video. Or I mean, at least most of them because we literally could be here all day playing with every single one of the teams. But yeah, these are just like my favorite kinds of videos just because like there's so many cool guys you get to see in the kind of current NFL. Like Walter Payton for sure would just be a monster in today's NFL. Now I was never super into Madden Ultimate Team, but I do remember Eric Dickerson was very broken. In Madden 20, I think it was, you could just run HB stretch with him and it was just insanely unfair. It will be interesting to see which running backs actually make a huge difference on their like current day teams. That was a nasty spin move. And I think he's gonna be gone, oh, not gone. But yeah, I am very excited to see the stats that these guys put up. Next up, we gotta check out Marshawn Lynch. Oh, the blocking was awful there. Oh my God, is he gonna be gone in one play? No, he gets tackled down. Could you imagine though, a real life running back room with K9 and Lynch? Like it would just be truly unfair to have them actually be together. Come on, Lynch, he's in. We'll obviously check out every team that makes the playoffs in those games, but let's see if I can make a miss. Oh my God, the spin is nasty. Okay, I thought I was gonna get caught there for a second, but AP's able to score. Now, before we go to the playoffs, I do wanna make some game play slider tweaks. Normally I just keep it on everything being at the default settings, but I've done probably over a hundred sims so far in this game. And the stats always underwhelm me. Like I think I've seen two 5,000 yard passers. So I'm going to turn run blocking all the way up. And I think actually I'm going to turn tackling down to maybe like 30. And also I am going to turn fatigue all the way down so that our running backs actually play the whole time. I don't know if it's going to make a real difference, but I do want to try to do something different. And hopefully we get some crazy stats. Oh wow. The Vikings missed the play. Playoffs. Philly, Dallas, and Washington all make it from the East. The Lions are the only one out of the North. The Panthers somehow got the two seed at 10 and seven with the Falcons also making it in. And no surprise, the Niners won the West. In the AFC, the Jets won the East at 11 and six and the Patriots somehow made the playoffs at eight and nine. Jamal Lewis helped the Ravens to 12 and five winning the North. Fred Taylor and Edron James make it with their teams from the AFC South. And Jamal Charles with the Chiefs and LT with the Chargers both make it into the playoffs. Now, please let there be some cool stats. Oh my God, look at all the 2,000 yard rushers. I may have made a mistake. Walter Payton had 2,800 yards and 28 touchdowns. AP had 2,727 touchdowns. Ronnie Brown, 26 and 31. Emmitt Smith, 25, 80 and 34 touchdowns. Barry Sanders had 
2,500 yards and 40 touchdowns. That is insane. Is that the most touchdowns? It is. But LT had 2,500 yards and 38 touchdowns. Clinton Portis with 23 and 37. CMC with 24 and 31. Like this is just absolutely insane how many guys scored. Which running back that we added actually got the lowest number of yards? Interesting, so it was Arian Foster and Derrick Henry. Did any of them put up crazy receiving numbers though? So it looks like the most was CMC with nine 908 and 10 touchdowns receiving. I mean, surely one of the running backs had to win MVP. It was still Patrick Mahomes. What was his stats? Okay, well, he had 59 touchdowns. So I guess that wins MVP. So this is gonna be our playoff bracket for this season. And we'll start out with the Cowboys up by three against the Lions. They got two minutes to go and only need a field goal to tie up this game. Goff's gonna look sideline and get it. He's got 300 yards and three touchdowns in this game. I mean, a touchdown on this drive. Wow, he had all day to throw here and ooh, nearly threw a pick. Almost was disastrous for him there, but it looks like he's gonna throw across the middle and caught. St. Brown down to the seven. Just over a minute to go. I would love to see a Barry Sanders handoff and a Barry Sanders touchdown. So now let's see what the Cowboys can do. I simmed ahead just a little bit and ooh, there's a flag on that play and they're down to the 20 and it's pass interference on the defense. So now they got none remaining and if it's in the field of play, the clock is gonna probably run a lot. Oh, and he gets sacked. Watch that clock, yeah, down to eight. Eight seconds. This is the final play of the game. Cowboys really mismanaged this. Dak is uh, under a lot of pressure here. Don't run with it, dude. Just throw the ball. Oh my God, the sim is so stupid. But the Lions and Barry Sanders hold on to win. So now we're on to Colts Jags, tied at 41, starting overtime. I would love to see a handoff. There's one. Edge is uh, very good. I mean, they all are. They're all 99 overalls. I did put the tackling back to normal because I do want to try to make sure that we don't get anything too insane in overtime. That was a crazy crazy catch by Michael Pittman. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about like the sliders we use for Sims. I was happy that we got some nuts stats, but it's third and seven now. Let's see what they can do here. I mean, they want a first, obviously. You want to try to get it. Oh, he shakes out of that. Could have been a sack but they keep him out from the first. So on the opening drive of overtime, the Colts are gonna settle for a field goal and nail it. So now we get to see what uh, Trevor Lawrence can do. I mean, with the game on the line here, he's gonna look deep and get it. I mean, ideally they want the touchdown. They do not want the Colts to get the ball back uh, just behind him. So it's third and one. I really would've used Fred Taylor to run there, but he's got a lot of time in the pocket and he's gonna run in a first down and way more. So now from the eight, nope, still no Fred Taylor, but he does have an open receiver. Lawrence is gonna shake out of that and get the touchdown. And the Jags are gonna win this game. So now we're on to the 49ers up by two against the commies. I don't know how we got a two point lead here. It must have been a missed extra point, but Jaden Daniels gonna get a first down. And Scary Terry got out of bounds, saving a timeout, which is huge because this is gonna be a timeout here. And they're already in field goal range. So we are gonna see some Clinton Portis who gains four. 49ers just used their last timeout. They're gonna hand it off. I think this is Austin Eckler. So they burned off a bit of time. They could have burned off a lot more, but I guess they want to try to get closer for the field goal. Daniels is going to get a first down. They actually used a timeout. They're going to hand it off to Clinton Portis. Okay, that's a good reason to use a timeout, I guess. You almost wonder if the 49ers like let them get the touchdown so they had a chance to get the ball back, but I don't think Madden is that smart. Yeah, I mean, technically they get one more chance here, but I think the game is effectively over. Purdy is going to throw it. What was that? I don't know how it wasn't picked. Doesn't matter though, because the commanders take down the 49ers. The Panthers destroy the Falcons 45 to 24. Bryce Young literally had 541 yards and five touchdowns. He does weirdly well in Madden Sim for some reason. And lastly, the Ravens take down the Patriots in a game where no defense was played. So in the divisional now, we got Eagles Commanders, Lions Panthers, Jets Ravens, and Chiefs Jags. And we'll start there with the Jags up by five. Chiefs got uh, just under two minutes to go with three timeouts to work with. I'd love to see some Jamal Charles. I definitely don't expect them to run the ball, but he is a great receiver and we'll actually see that here, but he's only able to gain a few. So now it's third down for Mahomes here. Let's see if he can keep the drive alive. I mean, it's obviously four down territory, but that's a bad sack to take. So now it's fourth and 14 from the shadow of their own end zone, basically. 
What is Mahomes gonna do here? He's actually gonna throw deep and he's wide open, but the coverage was there. I did not even see the Jag. So the Jags are gonna hold on to win this game. No three-peat for Mahomes. Next up is the Commanders up by four against the Eagles. With two minutes to go in this game, I mean, I'd love to see some Shady McCoy get a touch here, but he's gonna get the first. We've had some weird leads in this video, like a 4.1 is kind of uncommon, but he's gonna throw deep and Shady McCoy is wide open. McCoy gets the touchdown. Now the Commanders gotta get to the 39 yard line but they only got 18 seconds and uh, about two timeouts oh my god Clayton Portis is gonna answer for the touchdown what a catch from Portis so the commanders are able to win this game so now we got the Jets versus Ravens so now it's fourth down now let's see if they can keep the drive alive all day to throw Lamar's gotta run this come on you would have probably had the first down if you just went for it but he is gonna get the first and way more but now they have 50 seconds left and only one timeout to work with. Mark Andrews is, oh, I think gonna score. He's not. And now they got 30 seconds, but no timeouts. Lamar is probably gonna run for it. He definitely could have scored by now. And he is, okay. But they still need the touchdown. I have no idea what just happened to the lighting. And they do get it. The Jets do have two timeouts, so they can be aggressive here. And they are. So let's see with nine seconds left, if they're able to get it in field goal range, they get it a lot there and a timeout. And they are gonna attempt this very long field goal with Greg Zerl line who hits it so the Jets pull it out 50 to 47 Aaron Rodgers with a game winning drive there and for the final game of this round we get the Lions up by a touchdown against the Panthers so now it's fourth down here this might be the last chance for him he's got a lot of time in the pocket gonna throw it deep for the touchdown, there is a flag and it's caught. It's pass interference on the defense. So they got one play with three seconds left from the one yard line. Bryce Young's gonna run for the touchdown. So now the Lions will start off in overtime. They're at the 47 already. Goff has all day to throw. Oh, I thought gonna take the sack, but he doesn't. And it's gonna get a first to Laporta. Would love to see a touchdown from them on this drive. They have an open receiver for a first. Surely from the four yard line, we can get a Barry Sanders touchdown and we do. That's a huge run for him in this game. So now will Bryce Young be able to match that touchdown? Again, all day in the pocket, but he's going to ooh, not take a sack. I thought Aiden Hutchinson had him, but he gets a first. If the Lions were able to get a sack on that play, they easily could have sealed this game, but Bryce is gonna throw deep and get CMC for the touchdown. So now the Lions just gotta get to the 43 yard line to win this game. Surely Goff is gonna be able to uh, do that nearly through a pick. Tried to hit Barry Sanders out of the backfield, I think it was, but uh, he has all day here. Literally zero pressure on him. And he's gonna throw to the end zone for some reason and not caught. Why would you throw that pass? So now once again, the Panthers have a chance to uh, win this game here. CMC is gonna catch it and get a first down. But the Panthers are already in field goal range here and even closer after this CMC run. And I think they're just gonna keep using him to uh, get this even closer. He might actually get a touchdown. What a move there and scores. So the Panthers take down the Lions. So now we're down to our final four. Probably the weirdest final four we could have gotten. And in the Jets versus Jags, we're tied at 17. We just hit the two minute warning and uh, the Jets have two timeouts to work with. Aaron Rodgers had a lot of time and Mike Williams open. I cannot believe the Jets are even in this position. I mean, it feels very unrealistic at this moment that the Jets would even make the playoffs. And I say that as a Jets fan, honestly, a little biasly that they always break my heart, but Curtis Martin gets a big first down. But now with a minute 26, they're in field goal range and they'll keep running it with Martin who uh, should probably not score here. The Jets could literally take knees and then kick a field goal to win. They're not gonna do that though and not use any time. Ooh, he actually, oh, he makes it in. I thought he was short, but Curtis Martin gets the touchdown. So the Jets win this game and they're going to the Super Bowl. I swear this is not rigged. Like I gained nothing from them winning in Madden. And we're tied at 49 in the NFC Championship. So now it's third and three. Let's see if they're able to pick it up here. He's gonna throw across the middle for Clayton Portis who gets, wow, a lot of yards and shakes a tackle for a touchdown. Clayton Portis gets it done. So now Bryce Young has a minute and two timeouts to work with. He's gonna roll out and throw deep here for a first down. So they're all the way to the 30 now. The commanders are not able to stop them at all. He throws to the end zone and Uzama has it. I will say the thing I like about the settings I'm working with here is it makes for high scoring games that are really back and forth and they gotta get to the 39 yard line. They're not 
not calling timeout though, so I guess they're playing for overtime. I mean, he almost got sacked, but he gains a first. He's got a lot of space. Call that timeout. That was some awful clock management once again because they literally probably had a chance to get it in range for a field goal, but instead they're gonna throw it deep. On the last play, there is a flag. If this is pass interference, and it is. So now the commanders can attempt a field goal with no time to go to the Super Bowl, and they make it and win the game. So now we got Curtis Martin and the Jets going up against Clinton Portis and the commanders. Now all I ask is please make this game very close like the rest of them in this playoffs, but the Jets are pulling away in this one, and Quincy Williams just sealed the game with this interception. So honestly, nothing to see here because the Jets win 31 to 21. Honestly, just leave your comments now that this is rigged because I'm a Jets fan. Even though I swear I didn't rig it, it's honestly worse for me that they won. YouTube thinks you'd like one of these two videos floating on screen right now, so please go check them out. It really helps the channel. But with all that said, I'll see you guys next time. Be good people.